Huh. Can't show my players that artwork. They'll try to adopt it. Can't show my players that artwork. They'll try to adopt it. Definitely cannot show my players that artwork. They'll really try to adopt it. Morgan, no. We told you to stop feeding them. Nobody believes that it just followed you home. Today, we're going to talk about the Monster Core for the Pathfinder 2e Remaster on today's episode of The Local Disaster Tour Guide. Travelers and tourists, my name is Mark and I'm the local disaster tour guide. That's right, I am a storyteller who promises that he is not actually an ancient dragon stuffed in a man suit. Welcome to a journey through the fantastic world of TTRPGs like Pathfinder and Starfinder, and welcome to a mini review of the Monster Core for the Pathfinder 2e Remaster. The Monster Core is the third book that has been released for the Pathfinder 2e Remaster. We had the Player Core, the GM Core, and now the Monster Core. The MSRP for this book is $59.99. It comes in at 372 pages, and according to the back cover of this book, has over 400 monster stat blocks for use in your Pathfinder 2e game. And in today's video, I'm going to talk about my thoughts about the Monster Core, the things that I both like and dislike about this book to give you an idea of what you can expect if you decide to pick this product up for yourself. Now, there are a couple of things that I do need to state up front. Number one is, Paizo sent me a review PDF copy of the Monster Core to help me in making this video. I was waiting for the physical copy of the Monster Core to come in before I actually made this video, but I have been able to study this product for a couple of weeks because Paizo did send me that reviewer's copy. So number one, I'd like to say thank you Paizo for sending me the review PDF so that I've had plenty of time to research and read and prepare for this review. However, I would like to note that even though Paizo did send me a free review PDF copy of the Monster Core, they have not in any way tried to influence the actual content of this review. Everything stated in this video is a reflection of my own thoughts and opinions they did not try to influence it in any way. And speaking of thoughts and opinions, the second thing I want to say right up front is, please remember that everything expressed in this video is exactly that, my thoughts and opinions. That's right, everything you see in this video is just the opinion of some random guy on YouTube, and I always encourage anyone who watches these videos to do your own research about a product before making any kind of purchase decision. The best review is always to try before you buy, so if you can check this book out at your fine local gaming store or possibly borrow a copy from a friend, anything you can do to check out this book firsthand for yourself, that is ultimately going to give you the best idea of whether or not this book is right for you. And to add to that particular reminder to take my opinions with a grain of salt, in this video, take my opinions with a really heavy grain of salt. I don't want to come across as too dramatic here. Overall, I really enjoy the remaster that Paizo has done for Pathfinder 2nd Edition. There is a lot of great stuff that has happened, and there are also a lot of great things that are coming our way. But I also have some frustrations with how the remaster project has gone so far. And unfortunately for the Monster Core book, it kind of sits in a location that encapsulates the whole of a lot of my frustrations right now. If I'm being entirely honest, it was hard in preparing for this review to separate my thoughts about 
the remaster as a whole from my thoughts about the Monster Core in specific. I've done my best in this video to give this book a fair shake, but if I'm being honest about where I am personally, some of those frustrations have kind of bubbled to the surface a bit, and that makes it harder for me to approach this review in an even manner. To hopefully account for some of those frustrations, but I definitely encourage you to check this product out for yourself, because my frustrations aren't necessarily going to weigh as heavily on you, and as a result that means that your impression of this book might be seriously different from mine. I'm still going to begin at the end and give you my target grade and overall grade for this book, but then what I'm going to do is I'm actually going to start with some of the weaknesses of this product and some of my personal frustrations, and then I'm going to move to the strengths of this product, and I hope that that change in format can help balance out some of the frustrations I'm personally experiencing. I will also say that this video is going to be shorter than my typical review because there aren't really distinct chapters in this book. It's a monster book. It has a whole bunch of monsters. That's pretty much the sum total of all of the content. That and ability descriptions, basically. So I really can't do chapter by chapter breakdowns. I will let you know I do have some content I'm working on that will hopefully dive into some of the new monsters a little more in depth, and those videos should start coming up here in a few weeks. But since I don't have distinct chapters to go over, that means that ultimately this review will be a little bit shorter. So let's go ahead and ask the big question about this book. What is the target grade for this book? And then the follow-up more important question, what is the actual grade that I want to give it? Did Paizo meet the target, or did they fail to meet the target, and if so, why? And to answer the question of both grades, I think the best thing I can say here is, the B-tier book is a B-tier book. Let me explain. Monster Books are a classic example of what I would consider B-tier products in a tabletop RPG. Books like the Player Core are books that pretty much everyone at the table is going to need, and they are also books that pretty much everyone at the table is going to need pretty much every game session. The amount of utility that you get out of a book like the Player Core means that it's really an A-tier product. It really drives so much of the actual game experience. As you move into lower tiers, it's not that products are necessarily bad, but that they are either less frequently useful or more targeted to specific people at the table, and in the case of the Monster Core, it's that latter category, the Monster Core book is really targeted at storytellers. The typical player is probably not going to need a Monster Core book, and on the rare occasion that they do, they can probably borrow one from the Game Master. As a result, the Monster Core is really a product that appeals mostly to storytellers, and even then, not necessarily every session of a TTRPG is going to involve fighting a monster, so not necessarily every session is going to be one where the Game Master is going to need to bust out the Monster Core. And that is true of basically all monster books in all games ever. That is no different from Pathfinder, D&D, Starfinder, Call of Cthulhu, it really doesn't matter. So I consider the Monster Core book to be a B-tier book, that's the reasonable target that should be set, and if I'm giving a fair estimation of the Monster Core, I will say that Paizo competently hit exactly the expectations I have for what a monster book is supposed to look like. If this is the target, Paizo landed dead on target. They did what they were supposed to do. So, why am I frustrated? Well, let's move to the weaknesses and talk about why I had a hard time actually giving this product that B grade that I gave it. Okay, so what I want to do is talk about four weaknesses slash frustrations that I have with the Monster Core, and I'm going to start with the smallest frustration and move towards the largest. 
And I'll go ahead and say, in talking about these, I realize for many people out there, a lot of these frustrations are not going to mean anything to you, and that's totally fair. As I've already noted, the Monster Core sits in a weird spot where it kind of encapsulates the frustrations I have with the Remaster Project as a whole, and separating my thoughts about the Remaster as a whole from my thoughts about this book is where it gets a little bit messy and a little bit tricky. First up, there is some commentary that you can find online, there are some conversations going around, that there are some editing errors in this book. Now, honestly, most of the editing errors that have come out are relatively minor. One of the ones I've seen discussed a lot is the grab ability has changed in the remaster, but several of the monsters that have the grab ability don't necessarily have an athletics modifier for when they use the grab ability. There have been a number of editing, small, nitpicky things from Paizo when it comes to this book that people have noticed. Now, allow me to say that honestly, the editing errors are, to me, a relatively minor gripe. For example, some monsters needing an athletics modifier. I know how to generate one of those for Pathfinder 2e. It's not a big deal. And I will say that Paizo has been responding pretty quickly They've done a pretty good job responding to those things, and you can tell that Paizo is on top of this issue. And honestly, given how quickly things have had to change because of the remaster as a whole, you know, I'm willing to give Paizo credit. The overall condition of this book is pretty good, and the things that they messed up on are relatively minor, and it's obvious that they plan on fixing it pretty quickly. In fact, the main reason that the editing errors even shows up as a weakness for me is because I'm one of those crazy people that's willing to buy a limited availability cover for the first print run of the book. Come on, Paizo, can I get updated pages in here, please? If you're using resources like Archives of Nethys, or if you pick up a later print run, this is going to be almost negligible as a complaint. The next issue I have, and I fully admit that this one is very petty, but I'm sorry, I'm being honest here, the name Bestiary is so much better than the name Monster Core. I'm sorry, Baizo, the name Monster Core just breaks the fourth wall a little bit for me, and that hurts. Bestiary, or Bestiary, however you want to say it, that title sounds like something that could actually show up in the game world. You could have something that a Hunter's Lodge or a Scholar had collected about various creatures all around the world. And the name Bestiary really invokes the sense of the world that you would be playing in, whereas the name Monster Core just rips me right out of the game. I really do not understand why Paizo could not have called these books Bestiary Remastered. Seriously, it would have worked just as well and I'm sorry, I just don't like the name Monster Core. Is it a big deal? Obviously not, but I had to say it. Moving on to complaint number three. This is a complaint that is not specific to the Monster Core, but also kind of is specific to the Monster Core because of how the remaster has gone. If you saw my review of the GM Core, I noted for that book that Paizo has had to shuffle around some of the content that was originally available. There was stuff in the original Core rulebook that got moved over to the GM Core, and as a result there was stuff that was originally in the GM Core that is no longer in that book. And one of the major things missing from the GM Core is a fleshed out healthy NPC gallery. And allow me to say, as a longtime storyteller, a healthy NPC gallery is one of the most important time-saving tools that you can have as a storyteller. Seriously. The number of crazy things that my players do while they're running around a town that require me to pull out stats for a guard because they're going to try to arrest them. The number of occasions where a good NPC stat block is helpful for a storyteller to quickly access 
it's constant. Having that information at your fingertips saves so much time at the gaming table, and the fact that there is no remastered NPC gallery available yet is a major detriment to the overall Pathfinder 2e remaster. It is a major piece that is obviously missing. Now, do I understand from a design layout perspective why Paizo might have needed to remove the NPC gallery from the GM core to make room for the content that was brought over to that book? Yes, I can understand why Paizo did that. But that doesn't change the fact that a good NPC gallery is a very important tool for storytellers, and if you're going to take the NPC gallery out of the GM core, the logical place to put it back would be in the monster core. So, the absence of a good NPC gallery in the monster core is really, really painful for me. Now don't get me wrong, many monsters have multiple stat blocks, which means that there are a few stat blocks that you could use in a pinch in this book. So there are multiple versions of, say, Kobold, and you could potentially grab the Kobold Cavern Mage as a stand-in for a spellcaster if you needed one. But the absence of a true NPC gallery is a major flaw with the remaster as a whole, and the monster core was the place where I was hoping it would drop in. It didn't, and that frustrates me. Now I understand that Paizo is wrestling with a lot of different content, and they've got a lot of different things that they have to balance in order to get their books to line up and work. So I realized that the loss of some content was an inevitability in a way, but the fact that we have lost a usable NPC gallery is, I think, a major hindrance to the 2E remaster, and until we get a decent remastered NPC gallery, it's going to be a sticking point with the system for me, and that means it's a sticking point with this book as well. However, the final weakness I want to talk about when it comes to the Monster Core is the B-tier book is a B-tier book. Paizo gave us exactly what you would expect to see for a monster book. And Paizo? I know you can do better. In my long years collecting TTRPG materials, there have only been a handful of occasions where a monster book has ascended out of B tier into a true A tier product, something that was so high in quality that it easily exceeded the expectations I had for it. Now, one example of an A tier monster book would be the Draconomicon from D&D 3.5. The other four examples I have seen are the Alien Archive series, as published by Paizo, for the Starfinder RPG. I absolutely love the Alien Archive series for Starfinder First Edition. These books proved to me what monster books can be. These books go so far above and beyond what you expect to find in a monster book that it honestly blows my mind, and even though I don't get to play very much Starfinder, I read these books all the time because it inspires so many ideas for me as a storyteller. These books are genuinely amazing, and... They were written by Paizo. Now, I'm not going to go into all of the stuff that makes the Alien Archive series an A-tier series for me. If you want to go check that review out, I'll throw a link up here. But I just want to state, Paizo has proven they know how to give you not just what you expect, but so much more than what you expect. Paizo has shown they can bring their A game to a B-tier product, and that kind of means that I'm sorry, Paizo, but you raised the bar, and now you're not clearing the bar that you set. If I were to summarize the difference between the Alien Archive series and the Monster Core for the Pathfinder Remaster, the Alien Archive series goes above and beyond and offers content for storytellers and players and offers story hooks and new ideas and new rule sets. The Alien Archive series moves just beyond foes for your players to fight and actually gives you some incredible expansions into what the game can actually be. 
Whereas the Monster Core is just a monster book. It has your monsters, they're competently made, and there's nothing that goes beyond that. I don't want to belabor this point too long, so I'm going to move on, but I just want to say, Paizo, you have shown me that you can do more, and I kind of want to see you do that. But okay, let's set my frustrations aside and actually talk about the strengths, the good stuff about the Monster Core and the positives that I think are well worth noting. One very obvious positive about this book is the number of monsters to number of pages ratio. The fact that you get over 400 monsters in a 370-ish page book, and some of those pages are like ability descriptions and things like that, the fact that you have so many monsters cramped into this book is something that I think is genuinely noteworthy. Paizo makes good use of space, and as a result, they are able to put a lot of options in this book for storytellers to use. That is, honestly, a very strong positive for this product. Beyond that, you have Paizo's philosophy of monster design, which is very focused and very intelligent and designed to make engaging and interesting combats. I think Paizo's philosophy of designing monsters is an overlooked strength of the system as a whole. So as a result, you don't just have over 400 monsters, but you have over 400 monsters that are, by and large, going to be interesting and engaging for your players to deal with. They're not just going to be sacks of hit points that your players have to beat down. Another strength that is probably not much of a surprise is the artwork's pretty good in this book. There are a few pieces of artwork that I'm not the biggest fan of. For example, I'm honestly not much of a fan of the artwork for the Adamantine Dragon. The concept is cool, but the artwork just doesn't quite do it for me. But overall, I find the artwork in this book to be pretty strong, and I'm not sure who all the artists are, but there are several pieces of artwork in this book that sit perfectly in the middle of adorable and diabolical, or as my gaming group calls it, adorabolical. The Bogwid is a perfect example of this. I'm not sure how the artist can consistently make me feel like something is both cute and leave me terrified, but that happens a lot in this book and it is impressive. So overall, the artwork is a particular strength, and I will say, as a member of the clergy, that the new Archon artwork being inspired by biblical descriptions of angels? I'm not gonna lie, that's cool. I absolutely love it. But moving beyond those well-known strengths of Paizo products, let's go ahead and talk about another strength and one of the major focuses of this book, which was the idea that for the Pathfinder 2e remaster, Paizo needed to update their collection of monsters. They were deliberately moving away from the open gaming license and towards the new Orc license, and as a result, they needed to make their list of monsters their own. Many of the old monsters were tied to historical Dungeons and Dragons in various ways, and Paizo needed to distinguish their monsters to really make this game their own, and, and overall, I feel like Paizo succeeded in that endeavor. The monsters that have been updated and replaced in this book consistently, I feel like they did a good job with the updates. Whether you have a monster concept that was just being updated a little bit, like the Archons that I mentioned a moment ago, or whether you have a brand new monster that is completely replacing an old monster, whatever it was that Paizo was trying to accomplish, I feel like they pretty consistently hit the mark. For example, the old D&D trash monster is gone, and they have replaced that with two new versions of a creature called the Ophalth, which makes for a pretty healthy replacement. It fills that slot very naturally and is very well presented. On the subject of updated monsters, a lot of focus has been going around about the new dragons that Paizo has done, and I do want to come back and talk about the dragons more in a future video, because there is a lot of interesting content here. Paizo is replacing the traditional metallic and chromatic dragons, and instead is giving us different types of dragons themed around the four different traditions of magic. So you have arcane, divine, occult, and primal dragons, and from those general categories, 
My two favorite dragons at the moment are definitely the Mirage and Omen dragons, although I will say the Fortune Dragon also comes in in a pretty solid third place. Like I said, I feel like I could talk about the dragons for a while, so I'm going to leave that conversation for now, but they do highlight the fact that Paizo has done a pretty strong job of updating their monsters and their overall list of monsters to really make this game their own, and I do appreciate the work that they've done there. On top of that, the final strength that I want to mention is Paizo has updated the lore about many of their monsters. Now this point is probably going to be a little more contentious, and user results may vary, but in an effort to make their list of monsters their own, Paizo has actively, in many cases, tried to update some of the lore surrounding their monsters, and as a good example of this, in the section on kobolds, there is a sidebar about their magically morphic eggs. It talks about the fact that kobold eggs naturally absorb magic from the environment around them, and in particular are inclined to absorb magic from the creatures in the environment around them. This means that kobolds often place their eggs near powerful magical creatures in an effort to absorb some of that creature's magic into the next generation. Now, I've seen some conversation about this online. Some people don't really like this change. Other people, myself included, actually really do like this change. For a long time, kobolds have been tied very strongly to dragons, and almost to dragons exclusively, almost to the point that the ancestry feels like they lack any other definition. Well, this new spin on kobold lore offers a reason why kobolds would be so closely aligned with dragons. They're trying to absorb magic from them. But it also leaves open the idea that kobolds might try to place their eggs near other magical creatures, offering a variety of different character concepts and offering a little bit more depth and insight into the reasons why kobold society is structured the way that it is. Now, as I said, the lore updates, some people are going to like them, some people aren't, and that's probably something you're going to have to decide for yourself, but for me personally, I find that the quality of the lore updates across this book have been pretty solid. I think Paizo did a good job with that, and I think it speaks to the quality of the book overall. And with that out of the way, that covers all of the big picture weaknesses and strengths that I have noticed in reading through the Monster Core. As I've said, I would like to come back and revisit specific monsters, talk about them in a little more detail in future videos. That is something I want to do, but from a big picture perspective, I can say that Paizo has delivered in the Monster Core exactly what you expect to get from a quality monster book. There's a lot of monsters in there, they are interesting to use, they are well developed, the expected quality is there, and honestly, if it wasn't for the fact that I've just seen Paizo push similar products so much farther, I would probably be perfectly satisfied with this book. I realize that other people may not have the same emotional hang-ups about this product that I do, and that is perfectly okay. In fact, that segues nicely into the next portion of this video, where I turn the conversation over to you. What are your thoughts about the Monster Core for the Pathfinder 2e Remaster? Do you like the new takes on the new monsters? Do you like some of the updated artwork and lore? Or are you frustrated by some of the changes? And I'm curious how the bigger picture of the remaster influences your perception of the individual books. In my case, one of the major frustrations of the remaster as a whole has weighed heavily on this product. Still, I would definitely love to hear what you have to say, so jump down to the comments section let me know your thoughts about the Monster Core, and let me know what monsters you would like me to visit in the future so we can talk about them a little more in depth. While you're down there, don't forget to do all the other YouTube stuff. Please remember to like, share, and subscribe. You can check out my free Discord or my Patreon. All of the links will be in the video description. But, as always, thank you so much for being here. Thank you so much for being part of the conversation. Have a wonderful day.